you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I bless your name, O oh Lord, because you are great and greatly to be praised. What a mighty God we serve. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. And welcome to the resumption of a word of encouragement. I know that it's been a while. It's been exactly 10 months since we, well, I was on like this the, the last time we had a devotion of this nature, a word of encouragement. It was on the 3rd of March, 2023. Yes, the 3rd of March. And today is the 3rd of January, 2024. And I just want to give God thanks. I want to give him all the glory because let's just say he pulled me out of 10 months of testing, you know, growing up and hearing a little bit about biblical numerology i would get to understand that apart from the other things that the number 10 means it also talks about a time of testing so it's been 10 months since we were last here i came to you from a cruise ship yes the rhapsody of the seas I remember we were in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, so shout out to all my friends there in SVG. It was something, I think I even spoke about, you know, trials or something around that line at that time. But look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He has turned everything around. You know, for those who know, just to bring you up to speed until we can get into this morning's devotion. The lesson, let me call it that. You know, a new year with God. Right? Sometime after returning from that trip, about a week after, I became ill. Terribly ill. And as I put it, which is true, it's like the Lord, he brought me back from the brink of death. And he so, so, so disappointed the adversary. You know, of course, who had come to take me out. But to God be the glory, I can speak, I can think, I can laugh. I can do all of the things that I did before, despite all that went on with my brain. So to God be the glory. So I just wanted to share that with you and to welcome you to 2024 happy new year everybody happy new year and it is my prayer that this year things will be different that things would be different from 2023 the the, the type of unnecessary let me let me put it that way the type of unnecessary baggages that we carried in 2023 i hope that we will give the lord a chance in our lives this year where we don't even have to do anything like that all right so to him be all the glory to him be all the praise the honor that's due unto his matchless name and it is that joy of the lord the joy that the world did not give and the world cannot take away that I want to share with you this morning. All right. So we're talking about this morning. A new year with God. And there are some things that the Lord will do with us this year. If we let him. There are some things that he wants to do with us this year. If we let him. And one of those things the Lord wants to do is instruct us. Will we allow the Lord to order our steps, to tell us where to go, what to do, when to do it, how to do it? Will we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit 
that guides, that prods, that says, don't go that way. Do it this way. Drive here. Eat that. Don't eat that. If we listen to the Lord, he will instruct us. He will instruct us on how to win the lost, how to reach the people who are literally falling into hell. Literally, they're on the brink. If the Lord is able to instruct us, if we would let him, he is able, but if we will let him, he will do all of that for us this year. He also wants to teach us he wants to teach us in the way that we should go. Oh yes, we have our own plans. We want to go to our own areas and do our own thing. But the Lord, he wants to teach us the way that we should go. He also wants to counsel us. Oh yes, there is nothing like the counsel of the Lord. There is nothing like when you have a situation a problem an issue and you go to God first you go to God first and you say father I need your help you see sometimes we're afraid to become vulnerable before God we're afraid to let our guard down before God you know why because we think that he's a man we think that he is like our human friends, our human interactions. You see, God is above that. He is our friend. He can be our friend. He wants to be our friend. He wants us to draw close to him. But he's not like man. He doesn't lie. You understand? That's one of the issues that we have as man, you know, mankind. But God is in a class all by himself. We say it all the time. He's God all by himself. And then, of course, he wants to watch over us. Will we allow the Lord to watch over us, to guard us, to protect us? Important. Those are some of the things that the Lord wants to do with us this year if we let him so psalm 32 verse 8 declares i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go i will counsel you and watch over you the prospect of a new year can be exciting because of many new possibilities and opportunities, but also disquieting if you face the future with anxiety, wondering whether the problems and disasters of the past will repeat themselves. International crisis, financial setbacks, as well as personal problems and disappointments tend to cloud our vision of the future. So we think about all these things and we don't see God anywhere in the picture. But this morning, the Lord is saying to us, if you let me, I will counsel you. I will watch over you. I will teach you. I will instruct you. The Lord is saying all of this to us in the midst of what's going on internationally, universally. We're sure, just in case we had any doubts, we're absolutely sure right now that we're living in perilous times. Perilous times, friends. Serious times. These are not the times that you know, we say, well, I still have some time to play. And, you know, the God, uh, God understands. The Lord understands. He will see with me. No, friends. This is the time to get serious with God. To get serious about your relationship with Him. This is the year 
when if you're backslidden you want to draw closer to God you want to come back to God it's the year where if you're not saved you want to say father you have been good to me and I now want to surrender my life to you you will notice that this year a lot of my focus is going to be along those lines because sometimes I find that we preach a lot to the choir and it's important to encourage the believers it's biblical and we can continue to do that there are many who are doing that but somewhere the lost those who are dying get lost in the shuffle and we don't want that to happen this year so there are many things that flood our vision and we are unable to see beyond the tip of our noses as the saying goes we just don't see any way out but always remember that you can place your hope in the omniscience of God when we talk about the omniscience of God we're speaking about him being all-knowing He's the all-knowing God. We, we know the words that are used to describe God. One of them is he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. We're not talking about, you know, a little power here, a little power there, and we hit and miss that. No, he's all powerful and he's also omnipresent he's everywhere all at the same time and that's one of the things that the devil cannot be and will never be omnipresent yes he has his little demons here there scattered about to torment or oppress people's lives but he's limited even in all of what he's doing he's real don't let anybody tell you anything differently that the devil is not real and it's all in our mind and you know it's some fairy tale and no that's the first lie don't buy it all right so the lord we need to trust and hope in his omniscience he truly cares about you and that is a fact friends we don't have to if but and maybe if the lord loves us if he cares about us you know he cares about the details of our lives that's a phrase that you have heard me use time and time again and it is still true the lord cares about every detail of our lives yes he truly does so even sometimes when man casts us aside, rejects us, and say, I'm throwing you away. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. That's not God. And sometimes this is how you know those that belong to God. Because we're going to be like Christ when we say that we belong to God. We're going to be like Christ. When we read the word and we see the way that he loved, he cared, you know, he does it unconditionally. And sometimes we say, well, we're only human. We have our limitations. All of that is true. But if we don't allow that to be the thing that we see in front of us, and we give love a chance give caring for others genuinely a chance then we'll make it we'll make it just fine so rest assured that god cares about you he loves you deeply sometimes those around us they say they love us but it's only up to a point i love you but some but comes in there I love you until you step on my toes. I love you until you offend me. I love you until the money runs out. 
you know talk about friends that come around when the money is there and everything is going all right but the moment you find yourself in some trouble some spot that you have hit they're gone but the lord he is our constant friend and we have to start believing this friends we have to believe that the lord is there for us when we take up his word and we read it and we see all of his attributes and we realize that the greatest one is love love for mankind that's why he sent his son you know we just celebrated christmas and while it has become a bit not a bit a lot <laughs> commercialized we should never ever forget the reason why christ came and it was to redeem us you know we get wrapped up in all the gifts and the presents and the dinners and the ham and the turkey and all of that wonderful it's good to come together and fellowship but let's hope that when these times roll around, we remember Christ. All right? So he, he loves us deeply. Believe in the promises of God. And approach the new year in his loving presence. He will guide you through life because he knows what is best for you friends psalm 32 8 again i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go i will counsel you and watch over you that should be your prayer you want the lord to be your god capital G O D not the common G that we sometimes attribute to God Almighty and then we put the capital G to man to people to creation to the created instead of the creator he created everything he created all things you know I was humming <laughs> I don't know sometimes you know you hum and they say oh you sound like an old person it's not old people alone hum by the way and I was humming this little song you know that talks about that we were created for God's pleasure we were created for him because he created all things all right let's not forget that that god is more than able he loves us so here's another verse that i want you to memorize this year because we're gonna need the word we're going to need the word this year based on what i see happening around the world right now where we have so many false teachers the the things that are they're saying they're just not right and we used to say i want to know god for myself true how do we get to know god we know him through his word that's where we learn about him that's where we understand what he expects and requires of us if we say we're going to walk with God this year but we we will still be tempted we will still be tempted to think about certain things to worry to become anxious to wonder what's going to happen next and here's the verse you're familiar with it Philippians 4 verse 6 and it says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god ask god first friends whatever you need 
asking first. Sometimes we rely too much on man. Yes, some of us do. We rely on man. Yes, the Lord may use man to bless you. Yes, it's possible. But it came from him. We must always see him as the source. You know, I was making a joke with somebody recently where I say, do you know that you have people that whenever they're doing their monthly budgets, when they're looking at their expenses and they're looking at, you know, what they have, what they have to put towards that. So they would draw up a column and they list out all their expenses, their rent, their food, everything, you know, whatever they need, the utilities. And then they would put their salary, how much they're earning. So say the salary is a thousand dollars. They put that. And then right below that they put borrow from, let's use the word John, $500. You understand? And then they have a next line that has to do with some dependence on man. So in other words, their budget is completed with your money. Right? But this year, friends, I pray that things will be different. I pray that the Lord would make a way for you. He will make a way for you and you won't have to worry about anything. Even if things come up, remember, be anxious about nothing. Let the Lord have his perfect way in your life. All right, I hope something you heard this morning will be a blessing for your day, maybe for the week, you know, somewhere there. But of course, I wouldn't end without praying for you. And usually before I do that, I like to check to see who is here. I know it's early. I know it's dark outside in some places because we're on Atlantic Standard Time. So 6 o'clock, dark, somewhat. And then there are those, if they want to catch this devotion in the mornings, they would have to get up from 5. And then there are those who will miss it because by the time 6 o'clock rolls around for them, we would have already finished, but thank God for replay. You know, they can see it. Good morning, Miss Simone. I don't know if you're still there, but good morning. Good morning. I see, uh, what's that, Pat? Make sure the, the, the glass is working. George, good morning. Yes, Simone. Yes, she came on, greeted everybody. Miss Karen in Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning. Miss Darlene lets up. Yay, Miss Darlene is back. <laughs> Good morning to you, sis. Good to see you. You know, as we go along, you know, we'll we'll build up because as I said, it's been 10 months. But look what the Lord has done. Friends, if you saw me 10 months ago, uh, March. Um Yes, the 11th. I'll never forget. As a matter of fact, let me just pause this for a moment just to see if I can uh, show you something. Because when I say God is good, I know He's good. So, some would have already seen me um, show this photo. <clears throat> I hope you'll be able to see it. Yeah, just a minute. So when you're going to touch up technology, if it changes, then it will turn around again. This was me. Oh, the lights. Oh. I don't know if you're able to see it. Right? But this was me in March 2023 in the ICU, in a coma, don't know myself, but look what the Lord has done. My husband took this photo, right? Um, like I said, the light 
is not the best, but you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Maybe the view for you is different, but that was Diane sitting here in front of you now. And this is why I am grateful to God, friends. This is one of the reasons why I know that the things that I'm sharing with you, they're real because I've proven God. All right, I know the time is right there. I think I came on like three minutes or so late. So I walk back my three minutes and I'm still going to pray. But this is how I know that God is real, friends. When he can pull you out of something like that. I had meningitis. That thing was supposed to take my life according to the devil, the devil's schedule. So I could see him there with his little book. And my name call up and he says, all right, who we taking out next? Diane Lewis, check, because he thought it was a done deal. <laughs> but look what the Lord has done. The Lord kept me. He healed me. He gave me the opportunity, you know, to go away for medical attention, all kind of thing. And I'm saying to you now, look what the Lord has done look what the lord has done so when i speak highly of what god can do it's because i've proven him more and more time and time again and whatever he did for me friends he can do it for you he's no respecter of persons all right so i want to pray for somebody now who you're anticipating, you know, all sorts of things this year. You're not sure where it will go, what will happen. But just rest assured that the Lord is with you. That, that's what I want you to know. The Lord is with you. He cares about you. And he will see you through. He brought you to 2024. And he will take you through 2024. All right. This Saturday, 6th of January. It's my 49th birthday. Ooh, ooh. And I'm just saying, if it wasn't for God. I know it's not quite there yet, but I can celebrate. Because even up until this point, I know that God is good. All right. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy upon our lives. If it wasn't for your mercy, oh God, if it wasn't for your grace, we would have been consumed. But Lord, you had a different plan. And I thank you, God, for bringing us over into this new year. Lord, I pray that we would have new experiences with you, that we would have fresh encounters, that Lord, this year more than any other year, we will come to the realization that yes, you are real and you are the only wise God. And you're a God of your word. Help us to stay in your word this year, God. Help us to pray. Help us to fast. Help us to draw closer to you. Because you desire to do that. Your word declares that when we draw nigh unto you, you will draw nigh unto us. Lord, we desire that your word would be a lamp unto our feet and the light onto our path. Lord, I pray that you'd keep us in repentance mode. We may get up on a daily basis and when that day is over, we may say, all went well. I didn't do any wrong today, so I'm good. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to search our hearts this year and to see where we're falling short. And to say like David, 
Search me, O oh God. Search me, O oh God. And with your help, Father, we will change and we will grow and we will learn to love you more. Jesus, glorious is your name, Lord. Every single person that's watching this morning, I pray a specific blessing over their lives. Lord, you know what they need. You know what they're trusting you for. You know, Father. You know. You see the tears that some cry. You hear the words that they pray. And Lord, this morning, it is my prayer that you would hear their prayer and you would draw them closer to you. Lord, I pray that those who are not saved those who have not yet said yes to you that they would say yes to your will and to your way lord we love you we praise you we adore you because you deserve it you're alpha and omega you're the beginning and the end you're the first and the last you are sovereign you are great you are awesome and for that we want to give you thanks we want to give you praise Thank you for your protection, Lord. Go with your people today as they go about their various businesses. Lord, guard, guide, lead, protect, instruct, counsel. Oh God, we need you. We cannot do it on our own or by ourselves. So we just want to thank you this morning and bless your holy name. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Well, friends, we have come to the end of another word of encouragement. Remember, we meet here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 6 a.m. to 6.30. You know, sometimes we may go over a little bit, but I, I want to try this year and stick to the time because I know that some of you are busy. You have your lives to go about. You know, it's not everybody is as flexible as I am. I have a very flexible schedule, but to God be all the glory. And like I mentioned, at some point, some point, I think it was when I gave my testimony that I had pinned to the top of my page since October last year. I said that there will be times in addition to the morning devotions when as the Lord leads, I may do an evening session, you know, on something so that we can stay up to date and current with God, you know, current with the word, current with what's happening around us and look in the word and see, okay, hmm, no surprises there. The Bible did address certain things, but let me just say to us friends to hold on to God. We're going to need him. We're going to need him this year. Let's listen to the Lord. Let's hear him let's heed his warnings let us know that before he does anything he warns he chastens those whom he loves it's not like he wants to kill us i know sometimes we go through things and we're like god what are you trying to do kill me you know because the test is so hard it's so difficult but i assure you friends it's for our own good all right it's for our own good so may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord just lift up his countenance upon you. In other words, may his face shine upon you and grant you peace. And we know that this peace is not the peace of the world. It's a peace that is deep down, is not dependent on circumstances. All right, so y'all go on out to work today. Don't let anybody, you know, 
come and erode your peace. Right? Just count and pray, count and pray. <laughs> Alright, so God bless you, friends. It was really good to come back on here after 10 long months just to lift up the name of the Lord. And like I said, as we go along, we know that the Lord is going to do great things in our lives. All right. So God bless you and see you on Friday. All be well. Friday, 6 a.m. right here on Facebook as we go live for another word of encouragement. God bless you.